Okay, so here is the base valve. It was sitting in the bottom of here. This is the cartridge. It was sitting inside. The base valve actually threads into here and pinches the base valve up against the bottom fork leg into here. So this is going to sit aside. There is a mid valve inside of here that if you wanted to, you could change. But what we're going to do is be concerned about this base valve. If you can see how easy it is for me to deflect those shims, basically when the forks compress, oil goes in these three holes, squirts past those shims. The softer those shims are, the easier it'll be for that oil to squirt out. And they're so soft for spirited riding that we're going to change those. So our next step is going to be taking this nut off. You've seen in other videos, we're gonna grind that. Actually, we'll just file it. We're just gonna file it. This is soft aluminum. We're gonna file off that staking so you can get that nut off. Means you can just hold it like this. Start filing away. So we'll be back with you guys in just a second once this is all filed off flat. You can see it doesn't take very long. Okay, be with you in a minute. Okay, so once the top of that base valve has been ground off, I can actually hold it within my hand and I can take a wrench and loosen that nut once that staking is off. So I'm basically going to take that nut off and then you're gonna start orienting everything on the table exactly like it came across. And by the way, people ask me what that shim is. That's actually just when the forks open back up, it pulls oil in through the bottom of here and this is just a spring-loaded shim. There's really no resistance to speak of. I find it very, very easy to be true. I find myself alone. I'm just being careful with this. Yes, I'll admit okay, so there's the nut. You're gonna reuse that. Spring, gonna reuse that. Gonna reuse that top shim. This is what's known as the piston. You always know which side is the top because there's a little cutout. You see on this bottom side, it's nice and flat. That's because it's going to go up against these shims. But that cutout is so that the inside of that nut can countersink down into there. It actually goes over the top of that shim. So if you get screwed up and you can't remember which way is up, the cutout's always up. And then here are the shims. And when you take your shims off, what you're going to do is you're going to lay them out, take one off at a time. This is low speed compression. These large initial shims, you put them in order. Now we're getting into high speed compression when they're starting to taper. This is what's called a single stage stack. There's not a crossover. To crossover means that there might be a bunch of big shims and then a small one, and then a big one again, and tapering down. That's what's called a two-stage. And this is the smallest one, and that is uh, the end of the shim stacks. You've got one, two, three, four of these larger diameters, maybe five, maybe that slightly smaller. Yeah, slightly smaller. So you've got four low-speed compression shims, and one, two, three, four, five, six high-speed compression shims. Now, we're going to show you how you measure them. Basically, you take your little Harbor Freight digital caliper, zero it out, put it on millimeters. You're going to measure the outside diameter, which this measures 23.94. We just call it, uh, we just call it a 24 and then the thickness, which is probably a 10. So if it says 0.07, uh, that's still a 10, uh, 0.10 thickness. Uh, there's a little bit of variance between shims, but then you got another one, 24 diameter, uh, even though it's seven or eight, it's actually called a 10. So hold that thought. And now we're gonna show you the difference in what we did, so, or what we're gonna do. 
So you can see these one, two, three, four shims. Let me turn this down a little bit. Okay, so these four shims, one, two, three, four, is what we call low speed compression, and they measure 24 by 10s. This is the stock base valve. Then the next one is a 22 by 10, then the next one's a 20 by 10, then an 18 by 10, then a 16, then a 14, and then a 9. This is just a base plate that has really no value. So that's the stock shim stack. So your bike is a 2010? Yep. So 2010 KTM 990 is exactly the same as an 07 KTM 990, which is what mine is. That's what this was taken from. So then the question comes up, well then what do I do now that I've got all those measured? So the low speed compression is the dampening that occurs when the fork is going at low speed. So that's going through a swale, hitting the face of a jump, landing off of a jump, um, going through a berm, and there's a lot of fork dive that happens there, and so we wanted to stiffen that up. So if you look, what we did to change, instead of having four 24 by 10s, we increased it to eight. So we've got some extra shims here that we bought, and I had some, and we're gonna add four more so that there's eight 24 by 10s. And then, we added what's called a crossover, which is a 23 by 10. Uh, no, no, we didn't do a crossover, sorry. Then we want to stiffen up the high speed compression a little bit. That's the fast hits. And usually you try to make that as soft as you can, but if it's too soft, then the fork will just blow through the stroke. And uh, that causes a lot of that fork dive that happens when you hit something real hard. So we wanted to stiffen that up, so what we did is, instead of going from a 24 to a 22 in diameter, we added a 23 by 10 in there, and then when we put the 22 by 10, which is the next size down, because you're gonna taper it down to allow them to flex, we went with two 22 by 10s instead of just one. Then we put in a 21 by 10, which is an extra shim that we didn't have on the original base valve, and then we, put two 20 by 10s instead of just one. Then we went with an 18 by 10, same as the stock shim stack, and a 16 by 10, we added another one and did two. And then we did a 14, then a nine. So we basically added one 16 by 10, one 20 by 10, a 21 by 10, a 22 by 10, and a 23 by 10. So we added one, two, three, four, five more shims on the high speed compression. So basically that's what stiffens up the resistance of the oil to flow through uh, these forks. If you look at the piston, what I was trying to explain before is you'll notice that the holes where the uh, oil flows through, these three small triangular ones is where the oil gets forced through the shim stack are not very big. So they would be considered kind of restrictive. The three big ones is where oil gets pulled back and you don't want any resistance to that. So you kind of take into account that too. If those holes were a lot bigger so that more oil could flow through there, then we would stiffen the shim stack even more. But so that's the shim stack that we've tested on my bike and that I really, really like. And so that's what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clean everything. I'm gonna clean the ed edges of this all up and then we're gonna add the shims so that they're all lined up and then we'll start reassembling the base valve. So hang tight, we'll be right back for that.